Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to be talking about the parallel and series relationship. In this video, we're gonna be specifically dialing in to those setups that use two LiPo battery packs. Now this could either be your own build, something that you're considering, you may see an opportunity where you can use two battery packs and you wanna pursue that, or it might be a ready to run vehicle that you ended up purchasing and you see that there is a connector there where you can apply two battery packs and you wanna know more about that and that's exactly what we're covering in this video. We're gonna first go through why do we use two battery packs in an application. We got a couple applications that we'll be talking about. Then we'll go and see what are the big basics of parallel and series. What kind of advantages of each wiring are we actually getting out of those relationships? You can see the also the wire harnesses that we use. From there, we're gonna be talking about advantages for parallel as well as series wiring. And then we're gonna go through a couple tips. Now, this is not gonna be full detail on wiring. That is not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to really understand where do you want to wire? Do you wanna use the parallel relationship or do you wanna use the series relationship for your application? And just because you get a ready to run vehicle that has already been predetermined for you doesn't mean you have to use that type of setup. There is opportunity where you can change it. And a lot of times I do end up changing it and we'll talk about that more specifically very shortly. Why do we use two battery packs in a radio controlled application? Well, a radio controlled application for this video can be anywhere from car, plane, boat, helicopter, drone, it really doesn't matter. This video covers everything. And there are three reasons why we would want to. The first that we have there is placement of the battery pack. The second is weight balance of the battery pack. This is, has to do with the center of gravity of our vehicle. And then we have availability as the last item. Now when we're talking about using two battery packs, we typically start to see two battery packs being used in a radio controlled application around the 4S range of voltage. Then when we get into the 6S setups as well as the 8S setups, it is even more common to see two battery packs being used in those applications. Now you can imagine if you are considering placement of the battery pack and you take it to the extreme, imagine the highest cell count possible in a radio controlled application. Uh, let's go for example a 12S setup. If you have a 12S battery pack, that is going to be one big brick. And you have to find a physical spot on your radio control vehicle to place that. Now in some applications it might be easy. However, not in all applications is it going to be easy to find room for a big brick. The easiest thing to do in that regard is to take that big brick and make it and turn it into two smaller bricks. In other words, you take one big battery and you turn it into two smaller battery packs and then the placement becomes a lot easier. There is other issues that we run into with placement. For example, on this boat, you can see that two battery packs there in blue have been used. In fact, it is very difficult to use just one battery pack in this application. You cannot physically fit and place one battery pack into this boat without disrupting balance, which brings us to our even our next point. The weight balance is very important on any application. It doesn't matter if it's a car or a plane or a helicopter, it matters for the best handling of that vehicle as well as its even operation. When you're talking about the weight balance of this boat, we have to make sure that we split that battery pack, that one larger battery pack into two smaller packs, and then we can put the battery pack on either side of the motor or speed control. The same thing would apply to the helicopter. We have to make sure that it is also balanced and you may not be able to find a specific battery pack to actually fit into the battery mount that you have set up there. In which case you end up just splitting the battery pack into two smaller battery packs and then balancing it out on your helicopter. You can imagine this type of scenario applying to almost any RC application. It is very common in almost all of the applications that I've seen. Now when we talk about the last point there, availability, this is also a very big one. I did mention that you would typically start to see two battery packs being used around the 4S power range or cell count range. The primary available LiPos on the market start from 2S and go to about 4S. That is where the most volume gets sold. And more specifically at the 2 and the 3S battery packs. If you were to take that 2S battery pack and you have two of them, you could take two of those battery packs and turn it into a larger battery pack to use in those applications. It is a lot less likely that you'd find a 12S battery pack. In fact, they are quite rare. 
I have not seen a 12S battery pack being sold by the big manufacturers for many, many years. Yes, you can probably get them custom made, but again, you can custom make your own packs quite easily too if that's what you want to do. I don't even have a charger that would be able to charge anything more than 8S LiPo batteries in series. So you can see that availability is one of the big reasons too as to why we are forced to use two battery packs within an application. So now speaking of that ready to run vehicles is our next point that we want to cover for this. Let's first get out of the way our major differences between parallel and series. We have two configurations here up on the board. We have our first one here, which is a series harness configuration, and then we have our parallel harness. The harnesses have been circled in red, and then we have our individual batteries here below. In the first one, we talked about having the series configuration. In this case, we have the voltage doubling. If you were to compare these two setups, this is the differences that we would see. Voltage in these two setups, it would be doubled for series. However, capacity would be not changed. When you look at a parallel relationship, our parallel relationship would have voltage not changing, however capacity would end up doubling. So in other words, if you had a 2S pack here as well as a 2S pack here, the voltage would be equal to a 4S pack at your speed control on the other side. However, if this was a 2S pack and this was a 2S pack, your speed control is going to see just 2S. In our example here where we have our series relationship, if we had a battery pack capacity of 5,000 milliamp hour here and 5,000 milliamp hour here, we're going to see a total capacity on the other side of only 5,000 milliamp hour from our series relationship. However, in our parallel relationship, we're going to see 5,000 being doubled up to 10,000 milliamp hour total capacity. Those are the primary differences between a parallel and series relationship. Now when we talk about ready to run vehicles, we are going to see most of our ready to run vehicles using this relationship here on the left, our series relationship. We talked very briefly as to what we could do if we had one of those 1 -tenth scale vehicles. We use either 2S or 3S pack and now we're looking to go into a bigger application requiring more power. Manufacturers feed off of this. They know that the guys who already have and started off in the 110 scale have those two and those three as battery packs at 5,000 milliamp hour or so. If they go and provide a series relationship there on the speed control and they give you a couple connectors to plug into, you can use those exact batteries to power that 4S or 6S vehicle. Therefore, it makes it very easy for you to jump into that next level, that next area of RC using bigger and more powerful radio control vehicles. That is one of the primary reasons why you see the series relationship being used. Now let's go in and talk about which is best, parallel or series. We've got a couple advantages for our parallel and we've got a couple advantages for our series wiring relationship. The first thing that I want to do is I want to answer the question as to which is best. Is it better to go with a parallel relationship or is it better to go with a series relationship? Now this is something that in my personal preference it is not necessarily one or the other. It really boils down to a couple things. First, I try and make sure that I can get one battery pack to fit within my application. I prefer simplicity. I like when I can only, you know, it gets less confusing if I have less batteries to go and charge and get ready for my specific application. I try and make sure I can use just one battery pack. If that becomes impossible because of these sort of scenarios, I then look at the battery packs that I have available. And depending on what battery packs I have available, I then decide whether I want to go parallel or I want to go series. If I have an application that is supposed to work for a 6S 5000 milliamp hour setup and I have 3S packs at 5000, I'm going to use the series relationship. On the other hand, if I have a 6S application, the same 6S application, however, I have 6S 2500 or 2200 milliamp hour packs that I use in airplanes and I want to go and see if I can use them in a, in a radio control car or boat, I am then going to use the parallel relationship. I'm going to take my 2200s, I'm going to double it up in parallel so I get a 6S 4400 or 6S 5000 setup out of them. 
So really what I'm trying to do is optimize the batteries that I already have. I want to make use of them. Batteries are expensive. They don't last a long time. I don't want them sitting on shelves. I want to be able to use them in applications in every single application. I try and standardize my setup and that's what I would recommend as the answer to this question, which is best? Well, it really depends on what you already own. And then I try and gear my setup to that. So I'm standardizing my battery packs. Do you have to do that? Absolutely not. You can choose what you want to do. And here's some of the things that we can cover. Why would you want to go with parallel? Well, a parallel relationship does not increase the wire length within your setup. We have to go and bounce all the way back to our last slide here and we look at this particular setup. When we're looking at a series relationship, we can see that jumper that goes from one connector to the other. That's how we know it's a series relationship. We don't see that jumper here and we see all the leads branching out in a parallel configuration. That's how you can identify the two different configurations. However, when we look at our series configuration here, this wire here is actually being added to the system. You don't need that wire. If you look at here, you only have a small section of wire going from the connector to our main connector. However, here you're gonna have a connector length there, then you're gonna have it go jump to the second connector and then back again. So you actually have an additional wire length that is used in the middle here. And it's important to know that because if you don't already know, increasing the length of wire that your battery packs and speed control between the battery packs and speed control can actually damage your speed control in time. We're not gonna cover that particular relationship in this video, but I will leave links to describe that in more detail on another video that we have done. The second item that we have there is allows smaller capacity packs to be used in high output applications. Very similar to what I mentioned back here when I have my 2200s that I have for radio controlled airplanes. I could take a 2200 or my 2500s, I could put that in parallel with the exact same battery pack, and then I can get a 5000 milliamp hour battery battery pack at success to run a 1.8 scale buggy or 1.8 scale car. I can use those small capacity battery packs in parallel in order to operate a higher powered application. The next point that we have there is it boosts the max continuous current. Anytime that you're changing the C rating or you're changing the capacity of a battery pack, you're boosting your maximum continuous current that you can provide. That 2200 milliamp hour battery pack at 6S can only provide a certain amount. If I go and put that battery pack in parallel with an equal battery pack, I just doubled my maximum continuous current in parallel. That's an added bonus for parallel. Now when we look at series relationships, some of the advantages that we have there are we're able to achieve many more setups with our series wiring relationship. This goes back to our availability point that we talked about earlier. If you have a 12S setup that you're building and you're just waiting to select some batteries for it, you're gonna find that a 12S battery pack like we talked about is going to be hard to find. You're not gonna have many choices. My recommendation would be to use the, ser the series relationship there, take two 6S battery packs and place them in series so that we are able to double our voltage as we talked about using this relationship. A series relationship also so as an advantage, boost the total voltage that you get out of that setup. As we talked about here, doubled is our voltage. Capacity is actually unchanged. The next point that we have is the advantage. Most factory setups, as we spoke about, have our series relationship as a standard. And this is the configuration that you would typically see. So that is another advantage that you would see. If you're looking to match what is already done out there, it is a lot more common to see a series relationship. Does that mean it's better? No, it does not mean it's better. Either a parallel or a series relationship can be just as good if it's correctly matched to all the components that you're using and the battery packs that you already have available and so forth. Now let's get into the last part of the video where we go over a few of the wiring tips. And this is not all the details to tell you exactly how to wire. This is only going over a couple uh, major points that I want to cover. Now when we take a look at the parallel relationship, here you can see what these wire harnesses look like when they're broken down to more of a wired relationship. Here you can see that the positive is bound to the positive of this battery pack. Battery pack number one and battery pack two have both the positive connectors come together to form the one positive output. In the negative uh, lead, we also have the exact same relationship happening. All the negative leads come together and produce a negative output. In a parallel relationship, we have the exact same voltage, much like what we covered here. 
it is best to also use battery packs of the same age as well as condition when we're wiring in parallel. This is what I would recommend. It doesn't mean you have to. Uh, you, if you are not going to do that, you have to understand where the limitations are. If your battery pack, if one of them is weak and one of them is strong, in a parallel relationship, that setup is going to take the power from the stronger battery pack and not from the weaker battery pack. Therefore, your strong battery pack better be able to handle the power that's being drawn from it. If it cannot, because you anticipated that load being shared, then you're gonna over consume on the battery pack that is actually good. Our last point here that I want to point out is our C rating does not actually double for a parallel relationship. If we take a couple battery packs, we put them in parallel, we're not changing the C rating on those battery packs. In fact, a C rating is known as a constant. Constants don't change. It remains constant for that specific battery pack. When we look at a series relationship, you can pick out the series relationship because you have a jumper going from one battery pack to the next. Our positive comes out of one battery pack, our negative comes out of the other battery pack. However, the negative on our first battery pack goes into the positive of the second battery pack. That's how you would wire using our series relationship. A couple pointers about a series relationship is you must use the same capacity and C rating. If you don't use the same capacity and the C rating, you're gonna have an offset of capacity. And if you are expecting that this 5,000 milliamp hour battery pack versus this 4,000 milliamp hour battery pack that you're gonna consume 4,000 of it, you're actually gonna deplete our one battery pack that has a smaller capacity quicker. The reason why you don't wanna mix an incorrect C rating is because if you have a 40C battery pack and you have also a 20C battery pack, that 20C battery pack is going to be the limiting factor. That is going to limit exactly how much current comes out of that setup. Which brings me to the next point. This will cover, this will we'll tie both of these together. You want to use the same age and condition of the battery pack. And the reason is, is because as battery packs age, they get weaker. Their C rating may not actually be the same as it once was. Same with its capacity. If you have two battery packs that are aging the same, then the capacity won't be offset. It'll be likely very close to the one another. Same with how that C rating is withholding through the life of the battery pack. If you have one battery pack that has a strong output, or a strong C rating, and the other battery pack does not have a strong C rating, you're gonna have an offset, and what's gonna happen is you're gonna try and pull the current from your system, and that battery pack is going to be forced to dump the power out. Remember, a motor demands the power. It doesn't see if it can get it, it pulls it. It's up to the battery pack and the speed control to be able to supply it. If it can't supply it, it's going to get hot, and it's gonna get hot until it fails. This is what's gonna happen with your weaker battery pack. Your weaker battery pack is going to be forced to push that power through the system. And if it can't do it, it's gonna overheat and fail. And with battery packs, that is a dangerous situation. So this point is very important. It's not something that is recommended. This is something that you have to do. That pretty well sums everything up for this video. I hope you are able to get an understanding between the differences of parallel and series and which would be best for your specific application. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next week.